In ecology, living organisms interact with each other and the environment where they live. But to understand what's going on, we need to take a little closer look at these particular environments. And new ecological environments are being created all of the time, at least on a longer time scale that the evolutionary process operates. Climatic conditions such as ice ages and desertification can radically change the environment. Volcanic eruptions can create new islands or remove the vegetation from a large area. Likewise, severe flooding or fires can remove substantial areas of their vegetation. These processes and others can create what's virtually a blank slate with a new area of land which the right types of organisms can colonise and thrive. A new, totally barren area, first visible organisms likely to arrive making things like lichens and mosses which eventually create the soil that larger plants need. With these come insects, and later, as more food sources are created, larger animals. How exactly a new area will develop depends upon local conditions. The various new species are adapted or can adapt to different niche conditions. Also, as a particular species arrives and colonizes the area, they may, like lichens and mosses, change the area, meaning that some new organisms can thrive whilst other existing ones may struggle to survive or may, may even become locally extinct. Calling these locations areas is a bit inexact. In ecology, they're generally divided up into habitats and biomes. With habitats, it's important to realise that a habitat is just the natural environment for a particular living organism. This can include a great many diverse locations. Since a living organism can also include bacteria, the gut or digestive system of an animal can also be a habitat. Specialist organisms can be found in the deepest part of the ocean, or even deep underground, even high up in the atmosphere. When all of these habitats are added together, they make up the biosphere, or the layer around the edge of our Earth where life may be found. Now, Some of these areas on our planet share many common factors with other similar areas. Now these similar areas are known as biomes. Because of these similarities in these biomes, living organisms that can survive in one biome can normally have the adaptations needed to survive in another. So large freshwater lakes are one type of biome. The temperate uh, coniferous forests are another type of biome. The difference between habitats and biomes is basically that a biome can contain multiple different habitats within it. A coniferous forest will have a particular organisms that can are uh, adapted to live on the habitat of the forest floor. Others which are adapted to live in the habitat of the upper branches of the trees. They're all found within the biome of the coniferous forest. All of these living organisms don't live in isolation within a particular habitat or biome. They act upon the environment itself as well as the other living organisms present. This is a range of interactions and it creates an ecosystem. The type of minerals present in the rocks in a specific area combined with the amount of rainfall and a great many other factors will alter the types of plants that are likely to thrive. This in turn will affect the animals which are likely to be adapted to eat those types of plants. Then there will be again the animals which are able to eat those types of herbivores. The waste matter produced by these animals and how they distribute the seeds of the plants again will alter what types of plants are likely to thrive. The dynamics of a particular ecosystem become very complex and changing. One, if we change one factor within an ecosystem, it can have significant consequences for a great many other living organisms which have adapted for life within a particular ecosystem. I'll take a closer look at that next.